In today's video, Serum, the noise oscillator, and this, a product from my brand new company, my new website, Multiplied Audio. Link below for that. Quite naturally, clicks, transients, noises like these in the noise oscillator, the sampler in Serum. How does it work? And how can we use this creatively? Let me show you. This is the noise oscillator in Serum, and think of this as a sampler. Turn it off and on with this button up here. Now, as you do with the oscillators, you choose a sound, an audio sample, say, one of these, and when you play a note on the keyboard, it plays that sample as an audio file. So we use this as a layer to layer on top of these oscillators here. As the name suggests, traditionally, you might have white noise here or sounds similar to white noise. Sounds like these. using these as a layer, remember? Each of these is just a different audio file, a different WAV audio file. But we can also use this to add what we call a transient or a click at the front of each sound, adding, say, a click like this, or one of these. We also sometimes call these attack transients or attacks, adding clicks like this to the front of a sound, say, in Serum. These clicks, these short bits of sounds are called transients and they come in all shapes and sizes. In transients and useful clicks, for example, we have these categories. As you can imagine, adding a click like this or a transient at the start of a sound helps define it, whether it's a synth or a bass. That click or transient defines the start. helps define the start of that sound and tunes our ears into it. The click draws our attention to the start of the sound. That's why it works. That's why this is down to practice, and why there were some transients and clicks included in Serum by default. This category here called attacks are transients and clicks. These are included in Serum for that exact reason. But there are some better ones in this product here, transients and useful clicks, as you'll see, as you have been seeing. Oh, and a discount code for 20% off anything on the website. Use discount code ClickMe. But anyway, how does the noise oscillator work? What are all those buttons? Maybe the most important one is this one. See that arrow going to a line? This is the one-shot button, and with the one-shot button clicked, like so, When you play a note, it plays the sample through once and once only. It turns the audio sample into a one shot. And so with this button deselected, the sample loops as you hold down a note. In this case, looping the transient, the click, over and over again. Not what we need, not what we need, at least for most examples, as you'll see so. Generally speaking, click this button when adding a click. We of course have level, the volume of the sample, that one's obvious. But less obvious is the key tracking button. But it's very important. It looks like a keyboard. That's your clue. With key tracking off, it always plays the sample back at the original pitch for every note on the keyboard. See the keyboard here showing which notes I'm playing? Notice how the pitch is the same for each of these notes? Whereas if we turn on key tracking, the higher the note we play, the higher the pitch of that sample. This makes the click sound more natural as it therefore follows the notes on the keyboard. And so depending on the octave we play on the keyboard, we'll also need to dial in this pitch control. 
So in the case of no key tracking, and with key tracking, we can equivalently dial in the pitch, which we'll need to, especially if we say playing a bass. Think of phase as the start position in the sample and random here referring to random phase, so random start position. Therefore, when working with clicks and transients that look like this, we we'll always want to start at the beginning of the sample, leave these alone. Don't randomize start position and stay at the start. Play the sample from the start of the audio file. Panning just moves it left to right in this stereo image, as you'd expect. Easy to overlook though is this, the direct out button. If you click this, the noise doesn't go through the effects. Let me show you. So right now we're direct out off, the noise does go through the effects. In this case, the noise going through delay and reverb, the effects here. But if we direct this out, like so, this noise oscillator bypasses the effect. And so we hear it dry without delay and reverb. It's not that one way is better than the other, it's just different. Sometimes it's nicer to try it out, sometimes it's not. Here, for example, I quite like it going through the effects. Whereas on this sound, I prefer it to bypass the effects. In other words, sending it directly out. And as a general workflow, once you've configured this thing, Click this arrow as the sound's playing to very quickly cycle through clicks to find the one you like. Choose your bank of transients or clicks like this, and then just keep hitting next until you find the one you like. Now you may be wondering, multiplier, how have you got all those? It's, I, I only have four or five categories, you seem to have more. Where did they come from? How did you put them there? It's nice and easy, let me show you. Navigate to somewhere on your computer, like this, on a Mac anyway, and then just drag the folders in. It's as simple as that, just drag the folder of WAVs into the correct bit on your computer. And then you can see these folders here in the noise oscillator. So as you can see, for example, some of these multiply.audio products, 11, I think, of the 29 or so currently released. Not just transients and clicks, but things like magic crackles and new noise and drum samples, they're useful too. But anyway, as I say, once you have these loaded up in the right place, Choose the folder you like, and then just keep hitting next until you like what you hear. The adjusting pitch, of course, depending on where you're clicking on the keyboard. Most typically, as you've seen, you'd use these transients to add a click at the start of a sound, such as the synth or a bass, but you can also use them as effects. Can you see what's going on here? Look at that pitch being modulated. To make sense of this, note that the higher the pitch, faster it loops through. So as we're modulating pitch, we're changing the speed it loops through the sample, creating these interesting effects. Or we can do this. Sending a click or transient into the filter. An interesting filter, not a standard filter. Remember to click this N here so the noise is rooted into the filter. And you can pretty much turn them into bongos or any other drum type sound. Just useful things to have, these clicks and transients. It's, I mean, this is just even in Serum. Uh, as I'm sure you can imagine, these are just useful layering tools. Having them as audio files, layering them on drums. I mean, I suspect that's what most people think of when they think of transients. Take a drum and just layer it on top. Easy stuff. And don't forget this works in other synths too. In fact, most popular full featured synths, such as these. Synths like these like to do exactly the same thing. Sometimes it's called a noise oscillator, sometimes a sampler, as it basically means the same thing in this context. Mind blown. Marvelous. See you in the next one. <laughs>